Turquoise Stone. A complete guide to turquoise stone, its quality, types and colours. How to spot the difference between real and fake turquoises. Author, Saurabh Jamarani. Narrated by Deb Foster. This book is provided by Amateurs Art at www.amitisart.net. Chapter 2. History of Use. The pastel shades of turquoise have endeared it to many great cultures of antiquity. It has adorned the rulers of ancient Egypt, the Aztecs, Persia, Mesopotamia, the Indus Valley, and to some extent in ancient China. Despite being one of the oldest gems, probably first introduced to Europe through Turkey with other Silk Road novelties, turquoise did not become important as an ornamental stone in the West until the 14th century following a decline in the Roman Catholic Church's influence, which allowed the use of turquoise in secular jewellery. It was apparently unknown in India until the 16th century, and has been only known in Japan since the 18th century. A common belief shared by many of these civilizations held that turquoise possessed certain prophylactic qualities. It was thought to change colour with the wearer's health and protect him or her from untoward forces. The Aztecs the Aztecs inlaid turquoise together with gold, quartz, malachite, jet, jade, coral and shells into provocative and presumably ceremonial mosaic objects such as masks, some with a human skull as their base, knives and shields. Natural resins, bitumen and wax were used to bond the turquoise to the object's base material. This was usually wood, but bone and shell were also used. Native Americans the Mask of Chutacutli. Like the Aztecs, the Pueblo, Navajo and Apache tribes prized turquoise for its amuletic use. Among these peoples, turquoise was used in mosaic inlay, in sculptural works and was fashioned into toroidal beads and freeform pendants. The ancestral Puebloans, Anasazi of the Chaco Canyon and surrounding region, are believed to have prospered greatly from their production and trading of turquoise objects. The distinctive silver jewellery produced by Navajo and other southwestern Native American tribes today is a rather modern development, thought to date from around 1880 as a result of European influence. Persia, Iran Turquoise has been Persia's national gemstone for millennia, and it is known as Firuze, which means victory in Persian. Turquoise, or Persian blue, was widely used for everything from covering palace domes to decorating objects. The Persian style and use of turquoise was later brought to India following the establishment of the Mughal Empire there, with its influence seen in high-purity gold jewellery along with ruby and diamond, and in such buildings as the Taj Mahal. Persian turquoise was often engraved with devotional words in Arabic script, which was then inlaid with gold. Egypt. The Egyptian use of turquoise dates back to the First Dynasty, and possibly earlier. However, the most well-known pieces containing the gem are those discovered in Tutankhamun's tomb, most notably the pharaoh's iconic burial mask, which was liberally inlaid with gemstones. Turquoise was also used in the design of rings and pectoral pendants. Set in gold, the gem was fashioned into beads, used as an inlay and often carved in scarab motif, accompanied by carnelian, lapis lazuli and in later pieces coloured glass. In ancient Egyptian, the scarab beetle came to represent the eternal cycle of life and has been used in art, jewellery and carvings. Turquoise, associated with the goddess Hathor, was so beloved by the ancient Egyptians that it is likely that it was the first gemstone to be imitated. Faience was perceived as a substitute for blue-green materials, such as turquoise. Faience is earthenware, decorated with opaque, coloured glazes. France conducted archaeological excavations of Egypt from the mid-19th century through the early 20th. These excavations, including that of Tutankhamun's tomb, created great public interest in the Western world, subsequently influencing jewellery and architecture. In contemporary Western use, turquoise is most often encountered as cut cabochon in silver rings, bracelets, or as tumbled or roughly hewn beads in chunky necklaces. 
Lesser material may have been carved into fetishes, such as those crafted by Zuni. While sky blue, also known as Persian blue, remains superior in value, mottled green and yellowish material is popular with artisans. In Western culture, turquoise is also the traditional birthstone for those born in the month of December. Imitations As previously stated, the Egyptian were apparently the first to produce an artificial imitation of turquoise. In the glazed earthenware product known as faience, later glass and enamel were also used, and in modern times, more sophisticated ceramics, porcelain, plastics, and various assembled pressed, bonded, and sintered products, composed of various copper and aluminium compounds, have been developed. Examples of the latter include Viennese turquoise, made from precipitated aluminium phosphate, coloured by copper oleate and neolith, a mixture of bayerite and copper phosphate. These products differ markedly from natural turquoise in both physical and chemical properties. The most common imitation of turquoise encountered today is dyed howlite and magnesite, both white in their natural states and the former also having natural and convincing black veining similar to that of turquoise. Dyed chalcedony, jasper and marble are less common and much less convincing. Other natural materials occasionally confused with or used in lieu of turquoise include varicite, forstite, Chrysocolla, especially when impregnating quartz, lazulite, smithsonite, hemimorphite, wardite, and a fossil bone or tooth called odontolite, or bone turquoise, coloured blue naturally by the mineral vivianite. While rarely encountered today, odontolite was once mined in large quantities, specifically for its use as a substitute for turquoise in the south of France. These fakes are detected by gemologists using a variety of tests, relying primarily on non-destructive, close examination of surface structure under magnification. Natural turquoise usually has flecks and spots on its surface, while manufactured imitations are uniform dark blue colour with a granular or sugary texture. Glass and plastic will have a much greater translucency, with bubbles or flow lines often visible just beneath the surface. Dyeing between grain boundaries may be visible in dyed imitations. Some destructive tests may be required. For example, the application of diluted hydrochloric acid will cause odontolite and magnesite to effervesce and howlite to turn green, while a heating test will give off a burnt plastic smell and leave burn marks on the surface. Differences in relative density, refraction index, absorption of light, and other physical and optical properties are also used to determine whether or not a stone is real. Unfortunately, even material used in authentic Native American and Tibetan jewellery is often fake, or, at best, heavily treated. Valuation and care Richness of colour is the primary determiner of value in turquoise. Generally speaking, the most prized turquoise colour is an even, intense, medium turquoise blue, often referred to as Persian blue. Value decreases with the increase of green hue, lightening, lightness of colour, and mottling. In Tibet, however, a greener blue is said to be preferred. Natural turquoise in even dark blue, Persian blue with no matrix, can also be found, but it is extremely rare and expensive. Bone turquoise, imitation turquoise from fossil bones. GIA, Gemological Institute of America. The mother rock is often visible as splotches or a network of brown or black veins running through the stone in a netted pattern. This veining may add value to the stone if the result is complementary, but such a result is uncommon. However, if this occurs, the material is referred to as a spiderweb matrix. It is most valued in the southwest United States and the Far East, but is not highly appreciated in the Middle East, where unblemished and vein-free material is ideal, regardless of how complementary the veining may be. Uniformity of colour is desired, and in finished pieces, the quality of artisanship is also a factor. This includes the quality of the polish and the symmetry of the stone. Calibrated stones may also be more sought after. 
Like other opaque gems, turquoise is commonly sold at a price based on its physical size in millimetres rather than weight. Calibrated stones are stones that adhere to standard jewellery measurements and cuts. Turquoise is treated in a variety of ways, some more permanent and radical than others. There is disagreement about whether some of these treatments should be accepted, but one can be more or less forgiven universally. This is the light waxing applied to most turquoise stones to improve their colour and luster. If the material is of high quality to begin with, very little of the wax is absorbed and the turquoise, therefore, does not rely on this impermanent treatment for its beauty. All other factors being equal, untreated turquoise will always command a higher price. Bonded and reconstituted turquoise is worth significantly less. Turquoise, as a phosphate mineral, is inherently fragile and sensitive to solvents, perfume and other cosmetics, as well as skin oils and most commercial jewellery cleaning fluids. These chemicals will degrade at the finish and may change the colour of turquoise gemstones. Prolonged direct sunlight exposure can also discolour or dehydrate turquoise, so they should not be worn to the beach. Cosmetics such as sunscreen and hairspray should be applied before, not after wearing turquoise jewellery. To avoid residue build-up, turquoise should be gently cleaned with a soft cloth after use and stored in its own box to avoid scratching by harder gems or objects. How is turquoise formed? A hydrated phosphate of copper and aluminum, the turquoise we wear today is believed to have formed nearly 30 million years ago. The process happened in one of two ways over many centuries, water trickling through veins or cracks in a host rock, gradually leaving behind a turquoise deposit, or nuggets of turquoise forming in clay-filled openings within the rock. A matrix of veins or patterns can sometimes be seen on the surface of turquoise, which can be grey or gold in colour. If the matrix is thin and evenly spaced, it is commonly referred to as spiderweb. Spiderweb matrix in turquoise is becoming more collectible in the United States, as people prefer it. In some other cultures, however, any type of matrix has the opposite effect, decreasing its value. What gives turquoise its unique colour? Although we are most familiar with the colour sky blue, turquoise comes in a variety of shades, ranging from pale blue and medium blue to bright green and yellow green. Turquoise gets its colour from the metals present in the rock where it was formed, with its chemical composition including either a small amount of copper, which gives turquoise its signature blue colour, iron, which produces a greenish hue, or zinc, which results in a yellowy tone. Why is turquoise considered semi-precious? While fine turquoise is becoming rarer and more valuable because less of it is being discovered than at any time in the history, turquoise continues to be called a semi-precious stone. However much we might like it to be, it is unlikely that turquoise will ever be upgraded to precious, simply because precious is a traditional term reserved for diamonds, sapphires, rubies and emeralds. Why is turquoise so desirable? There are very few minerals on earth that are coloured blue, particularly the robin egg blue that is synonymous with turquoise, which is one of the reasons why this ornamental stone has attracted so many admirers. One of the oldest stones in the history of man, turquoise has had a reputation throughout history as an especially powerful talismanic gem, favoured by warriors, kings and spiritual leaders. Today, the very best turquoise is more valuable than diamonds, attracting legions of passionate collectors who love to geek out over different origins, colours and matrix variations. With the closure of mines in the US and the turquoise that is left in the world hard to find and increasingly rare, much of the best turquoise is already owned by collectors, which has only served to increase its desirability. But it exists – and the best one still is mined in the old mines near Nishapur. Which is the finest turquoise? The single most important factor influencing the value of turquoise is its origin, with the finest turquoise displaying an even, intense, medium blue hue. Nishapur, a city in northeastern Iran, is the traditional source of high-quality turquoise. In the United States, some of the most collectible names to look out for include Lando Blue, Number 8, B. 
Bisbee and Lone Mountain, as well as the Sleeping Beauty found around the world. The Sleeping Beauty mine in Arizona, known for its absolutely flawless coloration, but by closing down its operation in 2012, the value of Sleeping Beauty turquoise spiked. However, keep in mind that the majority of American turquoise on the market has been stabilised, treated or tampered, including many of the Sleeping Beauty turquoise stones. Many Sleeping Beauty stones are treated with the trademarked Zachary process. This book is provided by Amateurs Art at www.amitisart.net.